information about dismantling the two-party system went up. Uh, uh, Is it running? Maybe we can do that later, kiddo. Are you done? Are, are you done? Trump is gone. Like, gone, gone. It feels weird, honestly. The day he was kicked off Twitter and every day since has felt kind of empty. It's weird because when he was in office, it was literally every day that we would hear him saying some bullshit. He was kind of like my old pug Jackson, always barking and screaming and stuff, but ultimately never really doing much. I mean, he did a lot, let's not get that wrong. But on the broader scale of things, he, Obama, Biden, and, and Bush were policy-wise very similar. But Trump got called a fascist and they didn't. What made Trump different? Why is he a fascist and they aren't? Well, that's what we're going to discuss in this video. We're going to take a look at a phenomenon that is discussed more nowadays, but in my opinion is critically late in the game, which means we've got to get up to speed now. Let's talk about neoliberal fascism. Of course, as always, like this video and subscribe, and please support this channel on Patreon for just $2 if possible. Making these videos takes a lot of time and stress, and my longer ones can be kind of expensive since I have an editor for them, thank god. I appreciate them a lot. And if you can't do a monthly thing, you can also give one-time donations to my Ko-fi page, and pay attention to the fundraisers and stuff I have going on there. In the meantime, let's bust out this content real quick. Let's break down the term first of all. What is neoliberalism? Neo means new, obviously, so neoliberal means like new liberal or some shit. So what's an old liberal and how are they different? It's pretty basic. Liberal means something different, usually within the collective American consciousness than usual because a lot of conservatives use the title despite not really being that. Liberals tend to hold socially progressive ideas on things like race and same-sex marriage, or at least are more open to those things than conservatives. Liberals often present themselves as the logical center, the end of ideology, and the entrance into the era of the end of history. Objective, science-based, logical government that supports everyone's rights. They're not like those scary goose-stepping right or the nuke-waving bread-obsessed authoritarian left or those scary firebomb-throwing anarchists. They believe in peace and order. They aren't violent. They're cool, they're the chill politicians that skateboard and play clarinet and are all flirtatious and shit. They tell jokes, they're benevolent, they're the cool kind of politician. The ones you can sit down and have a beer with. Peace, justice, law and order. But this is what liberals say they believe. This is what they say they are. How they portray themselves, what an ideology says it is, and what it does are two different things. As an economic policy, it creates an all-encompassing market guided by the principles of privatization, deregulation, and commodification, and the free flow of capital. Advancing these agendas, it weakens unions, radically downsizes the welfare state, and wages an assault on public goods. As the state is hollowed out, big corporations take on the functions of government, imposing severe austerity measures, redistributing wealth upward to the rich and powerful, and reinforcing a notion of society as one of winners and losers. Put simply, neoliberalism gives free reign to finance capital and seeks to liberate the market of any restraints imposed by the state. At present, governments exist preeminently to maximize the profits and resources and the power of the wealthy. As a political policy, it empties governance of any substance and denounces any viable notion of the social contract. Moreover, neoliberalism produces widespread misery and suffering as it weakens any vestige of democracy that interferes with its vision of a self-regulating market. Liberals, in fact, do use violence, and this is where neoliberal fascism comes in, because liberals are also capitalists and encourage free market capitalism, but we know what capitalism requires inherently at all times. Imperialism, racism, colonialism, it's usual tools. So liberals make exceptions. Old liberals like John Locke claim to believe in personal liberty and crap, but made exceptions for lesser races like black people, Native Americans, Asians, etc. 
which is similar to how Nazis believed in socialism, but believed it should only be for the master race, and then didn't actually implement any socialism, but whatever. Liberals in the past made excuses for capitalist wealth extraction and horrible racist violence by just being overtly racist. These people are lesser than us and they will either die or be made to be like us and in the meantime, forcing them to do our labor and shit and build the world we live in for the benefit of our race is acceptable. Neoliberals, however, have learned. The Southern strategy is a form of US politics that allows racists to hide their racism while enacting racist policies that disproportionately harm people of color and other minorities. This is a right wing thing, but liberals do something similar. Again, they are capitalist and capitalism requires racism and other forms of oppression to exist. They construct their scapegoats differently though. Neoliberals make their scapegoats by making everyone worse than them by making them out to be criminals, drug addicts, illegal immigrants, violent extremists, and then racializing those identities, thus making elimination and exploitation of those groups acceptable. Oh look, it's the Nixon thing again. Basically, doing this means that liberals can do and will do a lot of the exact same things as imperialists and fascists, but with a rhetorical shield that complicates mass movements against them. The liberal view that the political violence caused by the 1994 crime bill is neither political nor violence is based in radical ignorance. Richard Nixon conceived the war on drugs to control his political enemies. Ronald Reagan gathered the resources to prosecute it, and Joe Biden wrote the legislation that gave it institutional force. In my neighborhood, three generations of community elders will spend the rest of their lives in prison, leaving behind spouses and children to fend for themselves in the post-industrial wastelands that neoliberalism has wrought. Again, the war on drugs that put them there was a political strategy, not a moral crusade. But what I find really interesting is that if you try to pin down who started this, sh you have to go really far back because a lot of people will use Nixon and Reagan as their examples of the first neoliberals, but looking at how shit really functions, all of this started literally back when colonialism first began. The same is happening now. What you start to see is that neoliberals don't have to start anything. They just have to make sure nothing changes. The system is a machine with automatic responses built in. Capitalism literally acts like an artificial intelligence, so no neoliberal president has to say things like, we need to ethnically cleanse people of color at the border, or we need to steal indigenous land and continue ethnic cleansings of them to further capitalism, or we need black people to remain a servile exploited class within American capitalism via prisons in order to function as a country, because those systems are already well entrenched. Neoliberals just need to do the upkeep and make sure those automatic responses like the police, the military, the fascists, the prisons, are all in line and properly prepared to perform their role when needed. They just need to make sure the process plays out in favor of the rich capitalists benefiting from what's happening. So they say things like, we'll wait and see, and we believe in diversity, while allowing things to continue without any intervention and allowing oppression of minorities to continue with only minimal efforts to alleviate suffering and uplift certain individuals to repeat their message. The other job is to make sure the left just doesn't exist. Neoliberals will insist that oppositional further right parties have to exist or have the right to exist and even do their job for them when needed as automatic defense, a quick correction in the code while in the meantime forcibly subsuming anyone further left into them while borrowing and therefore warping and distorting the language of the left while doing the opposite of what people on the ground fighting for change really want and in a quiet, through corporate media blindness, committing acts of violence and repression to crush further left opposition or real movements for racial justice. Look at how these corporate friendly organizations happily work with politicians and support them while they actively do things that hurt their cause at the same rate as the fascists. Even fascists use it. Whenever Trump or other far-right Republicans went too far and faced real backlash, one of the tricks they would use often was to shrink back to a ne neoliberal centrist language to appease to liberals in quiet tensions. But soon they would go back to saying the quiet part out loud and continuing the same policies. <laughs> 
never forget that in sunny, happy, liberal California, where everyone's gay and happy and nice and crap, they're the most violent and corrupt political forces in the country. A tidal wave of fascist reactionaries and a neoliberal government enabling them whenever they need to crush the left. All the while pretending they don't exist. All of us in the confused haze arguing amongst ourselves as some of us vie for approval from our neoliberal father figures and girl bosses. Some of us try to push past them and another wing gladly wanders in the smoke pretending our politicians are cool dudes to hang out with. Friends, parental figures, uncles, revolutionaries, and gay icons, when really they're all the same shade of blue. The most they'll ever do is let their meanest dogs bark down the easy targets to make you feel good, while the fascists continue to do what they do. The corporations kill us all and the machine keeps moving. And that is neoliberal fascism. Uphold the fascists, imperialists, and colonizing capitalists. Uphold what they've built and make sure everything gets along at a proper clip so nothing ever changes. Who's the next authoritarian? We already have our answer. And basically that's what the architect scene in the Matrix was really about. Surprise, this was a Matrix video essay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and that ended really bleakly. So if you wanna learn more about how some of this functions, some of my videos I would suggest would be my video on the commodification of Black Death, especially my video on the police. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, share this with your friends and comrades, and also maybe do the Patreon or the Ko-fi thing. And in the meantime, be safe. Don't do anything stupid. Or do. Who knows, maybe it'll be fun. In the meantime, Anansi out.